All right, guys, this is Jacob from Wager Me This, and in this video, I'm going to be doing episode three of How to Be a Better Craps Player. This is my beginner series. This is for the guys just getting into the game. Uh, and in this, in this episode, I'm going to be talking about box numbers and the light side specifically of the box numbers, the place bit, as they call it. And uh, kind of, a, I'm going to be talking about house edge a little bit. I'm going to be talking about uh, why why it is a thing and why is it it isn't a thing as well for the player. All right. So the first thing first is the four and the ten have the same probability, the same payout. The five and the nine have the same probability, the same payout, and the six and the eight have the same probability, the same payout. So I'm only going to do the four, five, and six here, and I'm going to show. Okay, so I'm going to show what the natural house edge is by using chips, because this is much more visual. It's better than just saying it's this percentage or this percentage or whatever. All right, so for every, on the four or the 10, for every one win, you're going to have two losses, okay? So if we have one win, we're going to have two losses. We have one win, we're going to have two losses. We have one win, we have two losses. I'm going to do six. I'm going to do them in $30 increments, guys. All right. So here we would have lost 30 six times, but we would have won 60 three times because it's two to one. Now, this is on a buy because uh, you buy the four and ten. All right, so what we're going to end up with is a dollar VIG on each one. So it's going to be a total of $59 payouts on each one of these. Okay, so that's on the four, right? I'm not counting this. This money in the middle, guys, is just what I'm saying was bet on it. So in six losses, you'll have lost $180, all right? And out of those six losses, you'll have won three times of $59. So you end up being essentially $3 down, right? Because 60 times 3 is 180, just like 60 or 30 times 6, right? But minus the $3 for VIG on the wins. Uh, some places are going to make you pay VIG in, in a head. And then you're going to have six more dollars. But I'm talking about the places that you pay big on the win. Most places are going to this, but not all. All right. So we know that's a three dollar difference. All right. So the four after six losses is three dollars. And the reason I'm using six losses is because that fits nicely into 36. All right. 36 is the total number of combinations. All right, so the same thing here. We're going to go six losses. What happens on the five and six losses at a $30 bet? This is a $30 bet, six losses. All right, you're going to win four times for every six loss. So we're going to get four wins. And this, on a $30 bet, you're going to win $42. Now, there's no VIG because you're not buying it. All right, $42. Not bad, right? Well, not so quick. Remember, you lost 180. All right, so let's see how much we won. There's 100, 150, 160, 165, 167. So you're actually, or 168, sorry. So you're actually down $12 at the end of that. Not as good. Not so good, right? Pretty significant difference from the four, right? All right, so let's move over to the six. All right, this one's pretty easy. You're going to have five wins for every six losses. And they're going to be 35 apiece. All right. You have six losses. One, two, three, four, five. So these are going to 
make up for your six lo or five losses. Then you got $25, so it's going to leave you $5 in the negative. All right, so that's House Edge. That's what House Edge looks like in chips at $30 bets. All right, after six losses, you'll have won uh, this many times, and this is where you'll be at negative. This is what House Edge is. This is exactly what they're talking about, that after so many losses, you'll have won this many, and you'll be down this much. All right, so... So just looking at this, okay, so you have in the same amount of losses, the four only loses $3, the five loses $12, and the six loses $5. And so you can, uh, you can calculate this out this way as well, right? These are the same as the other side. So which box numbers are the best to play? All of them. And here's where I'm going to explain why house edge really doesn't matter. All right. This is over six losses on this one, six losses on this one, six losses on this one, and so on and so forth. But it's also over three wins. So think about how many total rolls that is just to satisfy this. All right. So you're at 36 to 6666. All right. And then on here, you'd be at Three, so it's 39, 4, 43, 48, 53, uh, 57, 60. 60 total rolls in the box numbers only that have to hit the box numbers and, and to get to this point, right? So that's not reality, guys. It's not how craps is played. It's not how players play. But this is what House Edge is. This is what it looks like in chips. All right. Over six losses, this is what you'd, you'd be down. All right. If you, had the, if you had the correct number of wins to go along with it. The problem is, is craps doesn't play that way. House Edge is built over million infinite rolls. Okay. It's built over an unlimited amount of rolls. All right. That's why they just correlate it down. To fit the probability of the game All right so that's when they tell you it's 1.4 percent or whatever five percent six percent whatever they say the house edge is they're just trying to tell you that if you bet that one single bet over time that's what you're going to come down with but that's not what craps players do guys craps don't play one bet and they don't play it forever they play for a very limited number of rolls and so they play a very most craps players play multiple bets over a very small number of rolls. And now you can calculate that out house using the house edge formula. And it's going to give you another number that's really not real. But what, what does happen in the game of craps is that is the four and the 10, is it better than the six and the eight? The, the house edge says it is. The house edge says if you buy the four and 10, over, over time you're gonna do better than with the six and the eight by $2 per, per win at a 30 level. It's significantly, it's $9 better than the five and the nine. And, and so is that true? Well, yes and no. If it fits your strategy, it can be useful. House edge can be a useful tool to look at and say, okay, the natural natural average of everything says that I should do at least this well. All right. So from that standpoint, yes, the four and the ten are the best box numbers to bet because you get a two to one payback minus a small big. All right. But in the in the way the game plays, they're not necessarily the best. I'm not saying they're the worst either. I'm not saying they're bad, but they're not necessarily the best. The higher probability number is the better number. Not higher payout, higher probability. Probability versus payout. All right. You're going to win more times uh, on average playing the six and eight because you're going to play for a shorter amount of time to hit these. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to have weird runs of fours and tens that spike way up and you're like, oh, look. But the truth is playing the six and eight is a better play than playing the four and the ten. All right. But when it comes to the five and nine, playing the four and 10 is a better play than playing the five and nine. And that's because 
at that point, the probability doesn't outweigh the payout. But when you have two more combinations here, two more than that one, it does outweigh it, all right? That's almost half, half again as likely. So again, it's, it, it, some of it is kind of preference stuff, but really guys, playing the six and eight is the best two box numbers to play. And one of the things as beginners you should do, in my opinion, is quit worrying about what the exact payouts are and just, and just calculate them as wins, as hits. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. All right, so I'm going to put $300 down here. If I can figure out what I'm doing. Okay, there's 200. Another 100. That's $300, all right? Now, if we just play by purely house edge, this tells us to play the 4 and 10 with this $300, and hopefully we'll break even. But probability tells us that we should be playing the 6 and 8, all right? So here's the deal, okay? We're going to play both of them, and we're going to see which one does better, all right? So I'm going to start with a $20. We'll use 30 because 30 is equal. Okay, so which one's going to do better? I'm going to put the winnings out in front, all right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to play a three hits and down strategy. This is where house edge starts mattering, all right? We're going to add strategy into what we're doing, all right? So after three hits and down, I'm going to take the money down. I'm going to take all of the money down. Which one do you think is going to hit more often at three hits and down? Well, of course, the six and eight are because they're, they're twice as likely, nearly. So here we go. Let's just roll it out. I'm just going to roll it from right here. All right, everything's working all the time. And we have a nine. Of course, the ones I said don't hit as much, right? That's not really what I said, but there's the six, okay? There's one hit. See how many times three hits and down works better on the six and the eight. And there's two hits, a five, one. Three hits and down. And the nine, point made. Good shooter here. All right, still everything's working. And the seven, okay. So we didn't quite make it to three hits and down. But what did we win? We won two sixes. Rack them up. Well, put them back out. All right, so I'm going to, we had, we had two six wins. Same thing, here we go. We got third six win. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just randomly rolling these dice, guys. And what it is, is that the probability is far higher that on an individual roll of dice that you're going to hit that six and eight above that four and that ten. It's far higher. And there's aces. And so this is me showing that it is better to be playing the six and the eight than the four and the 10. Now, does that mean you're never gonna hit fours and tens? No, it just means that if you're choosing a certain place bet to place, choose the six and eight first. Once you get that six and eight going, then you can move into the other ones. But take the probability advantage first. Because you're more worried about hits. All right, there's a 10. You're more worried about hits than you are about the actual dollar amount. And I know that sounds crazy, right? But it's true. Because if you're going to play like a three hits and down type thing. Now, I didn't go down here, but we would never hit the 10. I forgot that I was supposed to go down. We would have never hit the 10. But look how fast this is outpacing that four and that 10. I'm, I'm just chunking the dice out there, guys. There's a 10. Now, for every one 10, it counts as two of these. So that is a big advantage there. But you're going to hit them so much less that you should start with the six and eight. And this is what I'm all I'm trying to show is that these are where you should start. After that, it's okay to move into the other stuff. But start here. Because they're going to hit 
this much more. And this isn't too unusual here. Now, not having the sevens is relatively unusual, but just the, the missing of the four, that's not unusual. And there's the seven, okay. So again, look how many hits. We had three, four, and 10 hits, and we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, six and eight hits, right? That's pretty significantly different. So let's look at where we're at. All right, so we had these $60 hits. That's a good one, right? We got $180 in wins, All right? How many of these did it take to get to 180? Quite a few of them, right? There's six, it's 150. Okay, yeah, there's 180. All right, so this is how much in that little small group of rolls that the six and eight outpaced the four and 10, all right? But the house edge says this shouldn't be true. The house edge, all right? So th this knocks that out. So we are 125, 75. 205. Okay, so it beat it by $205. That many more hits. So probability is superior to payout. And I just want you to keep that in mind as a new craps player that betting the more probable bets is going to be more effective than betting the more the higher payout bets. The higher payout bets, uh, you should you should get used to the game and understanding what's really going on before you start with those bets, before you start into betting the four and tens and betting all those bets and getting a lot of money out there, you should play probability first. And after probability, then you should start building into the bigger profits. And that leads me into my second part of this. If you wanted to play probability, you're like, well, just play all the box numbers, right? You're going to get three ways to win, four ways to win. That's seven plus 10 is 17. 24 ways to win, right? Yeah, yes and no. Because the six ways you lose on, you lose every one of these. So what it's actually like is... Three versus six, four versus six, five versus six, five versus six, four versus six, and three versus six. It's not 24 versus six, all right? Uh, from a, like if you were just going to leave it out there standpoint. Now, if you're going to just do one rolling down, yeah, it is 24 versus six, all right? If you were going to go two rolls and down, it's essentially 12 versus six. If you're gonna go three rolls and down, it's six versus six. And this is simple math, guys, because you don't divide the bottom number, all right? It's still got the same chance to hit that seven, but the longer you go, the less chance you are gonna beat that seven when you play all the way across, all right? So I wanna show something really quick. Uh, I'm just gonna mark it with the white chips how many times we make it three hits. All right, what would be, I'm gonna work all the time, how many times would we hit three of these, all right? Before a seven, all right? There's a three, that's not one. And an 11, that's not a hit. And an 11, that's not a hit. And a four, okay, so there's one. Two. We need one more hit before a seven. Three. Okay, so that's one. We made it one time before a seven. So we would be down. All right, I'm going to roll out till I see a seven. All 
And again, I'm just rolling from about three feet away, but I'm rolling them hard, so they're pretty random. This would have been a pretty good roll. Wow, really good roll. And there's our seven. Okay, so we made it one time. Let's see if we can make it a second time. And there's an 11. There's a nine. All right, you should only make it on three hits and down going across about every other time. So we didn't make it the second time. We only got one hit in. All right, let's go a third one. There's an 11. In fact, I'll mark it in reds on the ones that didn't. And there's an eight, okay, so that's one. A 10. And a seven, we didn't make it that time. On three hits and down. And a three. Yeah, dice off the table. All right, a six, a six, a three, a five. Okay, so we made it that time. So we're gonna roll till our seven. So as you can see, there's an eight. As you can see so far, it's tracking just right. Half the time you should get three hits and down and half the time the seven should come before you get three hits. There's our seven. All right, so starting over, we got an eight. And, and guys, this is just easy math. This isn't this isn't high end math. This is just easy math. All right, it made it that time. Three hits and down. And what you're looking for, all right, we're looking for a seven now. We're looking for there's our seven. All right, so new run. You're looking for a good group of of dice that wins more than it loses, right? If you're playing light side. And there's the 10. So right now we're plus one on the good. And there's the nine, all right, we're plus two times on three hits and down. All right, we're looking for a seven. Remember, I'm playing like these are all individual of each other. There's no frequency here, it's just all individual. There's an eight, an eight, a six, a six, and the seven, okay? All right, so right now we're four to two to the good. That's really good. And a nine, okay? And a seven. Okay, so we only made it one hit. Now we're four to three. There's a four. There's a six. And there's the seven. Okay, so again, now we're four to four. This is going to keep going like this, okay? When you're playing all the way across. Getting the probability advantage. If you're if you're playing anything more than three hits for a probability advantage, you're going to be in the negative. You're going to lose more often than you're going to win. So three hits and down, two hits and down, or one hit and down is where you got to live on that uh, to stay. The, I'm talking about purely random guys. I'm not talking about no dice control or anything like that. But this is going to keep repeating itself. If you railed this out a thousand times, this is going to come really close to even because that's what the math says. So again, when you're getting into playing the box numbers, guys, when you're, when you're, when you're getting on that step, and that's where you should be, you should be playing the box numbers, uh, whether with them or against them, you got to realize that there's limits to it. Because if you're on the light side, the seven kills all of the box numbers in one roll.
and you can only win one of the box numbers at a time. You can't win two box numbers at a time, guys. So, again, what I'm trying to show here is that while House Edge is a thing, it doesn't really matter to the player in the game of craps because you're not going to be there for a million rolls. You're not going to be there for 500 shooters. Now, over if you track yours over the course of time, sure. Absolutely. But probability is superior to all of it. It's superior to the payout. It's superior to house edge. And the reason being is because as a craps player, you should be playing with strategy. And so your strategy should be something where you get hits and then you get out of the game. You don't want to keep in the game to eventually give the money back. You, you want to get the money and then get out of the game. Get the money and get out of the game. All right. So then you got to understand how many hits are safe. Where, where is your safe? At which point are you gambling? Okay, so if you're playing across and you're playing three hits and down, two hits and down, or one hit and down, you're playing with strategy. If you play for four hits or more, you're gambling. Then you're gambling against the odds. You're gambling against the natural percentages of the game. You don't want to do that. Stay within what the game offers. Don't, don't jump out of the, out of the box assuming oh hey this one's going to go long Th that's not necessarily true will it sometimes sure but then there's other times you say that and there's going to be a seven pop-up next roll so again it comes down to just the, the normal math of the game and understanding why one thing leads to another leads to another leads to another and what box you got to put yourself in as a beginning craps player now, as an advanced craps player, you're going to do some other things to minimize those risks. But in the beginning, when you start playing the box numbers, it's okay to play them all. But remember, you can't just leave them up there forever. It's not going to work out in the end. Anyways, guys, I hope you like this video. This is Jacob from Wedge Me This, and you guys have a great day.